I want to um, show you another interesting topic, another project I'm doing with uh, Dr. Dominic Gerlitz. Um, it's concerning the step buildings we have uh, in the Mediterranean Sea and beyond. So the very first step buildings were the Mastabas in, the, in Mesopotamia. And it is claimed that this was the original ones and later on the pyramids in Egypt became uh, like this or uh, uh, were built upon this system. So the first colonization of from Mesopotamia began with the Neolithic Re Revolution and it reached the Atlantic 5300 before Christ. And for this we have for this, we have um, visited many different islands. Here we are in Sicily. And the interesting thing is that these step buildings are always are where uh, volcanoes are and where you have obsidian. Because obsidian was a very... Huh? This one? Because obsidian was um, the iron of the Stone Age. And with obsidian, you can make scalpel, you can make very sharp knives and it, they will not rust. So obsidian was always a very good um, trading, um, uh, trading subject. Product. Hmm? Product. Product, yeah. So all on these islands which, ha have, um, which have volcanoes, you always find these step buildings. So here in Sicily, we find many of these step buildings and with our Ramar project it's our mission to scan such objects or, or um, buildings in, uh, with many many photos to do a photogrammetrical 3D animation of it. And this was the very first um, try. So I was there um, with my family and then they had to go around and everybody must take pictures so, and then we had about um, 500 pictures from all around and also with the drone from above. And then my friends of Ramar, they did this uh, 3D reconstruction of this step building in Sicily. This was the very first one we did. In Pedara, where these um, structures are, there between the, the, um, the, the houses, you can still see today that the, it is full with such step building structures all around. Now the people they don't care, the locals, so they just build their houses on top because it is not protected and for the archaeology it is not, um, not really necessary or not interesting because they know nothing about it. And I had my drone there the first year so <laughs> that's why <laughs> it flips a little bit too much. But um, yeah, this was the first one. And then, with my friend and um, colleague, we went to Tenerife on the Canary Islands because there is the pyramid park of um, Thor Heyerdahl, who did it um, 30 or 40 years ago. He protected the space of land uh, because they wanted to build uh, a shopping mall on top. So he could um, buy this place and did a wonderful park and also restored this, um, these step buildings. And also there for the Ramar um, a, m project in, together with Abora, if you are interested in it, uh, ramar.space, that's the website. There you can see all these models and all these things we have done until now. And there <coughs> you have this, um, these step buildings. We don't call it pyramids, but better call it step buildings. And we um, knew from several sources that they are orientated astronomically. Uh, when they first, uh, 30, 40 years ago, when they did the first um, researches on it, they claimed to have um, 30 different astronomical alignments but nowadays only one is still accepted. And this is because it looks like that. There are seven pyramids where, with many steps and, and things uh, uh, between. And the very 
only accepted um, alignment is now the one from the long side here, which points up to this point here up in the mountain. Because there we have an equinox on the 21st of June, we have a double sunset. When the sun goes down on 21st of June, it goes down like this, it disappears for a very short moment and then quickly it, it, it comes again. So this double sunset is marked in these pyramids. So we wanted to know, um, is, it, is there more um, astronomical alignments? So what we did, we measured again the whole area with um, drones, we have big targets that the computer knows where to put the pictures. So we put all these targets all around the whole area. Also very important is always the orientation, otherwise we cannot measure um, the, the alignments. And so we flew, or, or I flew over this whole area, which is um, 58, 1800 square meters area and I did 855 pictures all over and so my colleagues from Aramar could make a 3D model out of it. And this 3D model, this is now the model, not the photos anymore. And th with this models, uh, with this model we went um, to, to other friends of Dr. Görlitz, they are uh, specialized in cartography and they had access to LIDAR dates of the, Spanish, um, of the Spanish government. So we wanted to bring these structures in connection with the whole area around, with the mountain in the, in the back and also on the, uh, with the island of uh, the Can uh, Gran Canaria, uh, which you can see from Guimar. So they put everything in the right place and then um, they realized Wow, there are much more alignments and the, we had a help or the, the guy who did it, he is a very famous um, archaeoastronomer in Germany. His name is Dr. Michael Rappenglück. And Dr. Rappenglück, ah, sorry, here you can find the whole um, 3D scans or, or models. You can check that out on your own on this website, ramar.space. So Dr. Rappenglück found out that many of these um, pyramids are aligned to the east where Gran Canaria is. And officially the Canary Islands were um, uh, settled or, or, or uh, colonized 800 BC. That's the official, um, that's the official meaning. But we found out that these alignments point to, Gran Can to very sacred places on Gran Canaria and this only is possible 2900 BC. Be and also there, 2900 BC, on a certain day, uh, the, um, the big dog from the Sirius systems exactly um, rises over such a sacred place on Gran Canaria. And there we solved another mystery, the name Gran Canaria, Gran Canus, gr uh, big dog. And nobody knew who, where the name comes from. They thought, okay, maybe it's because they found big dogs on the island. But no, the main star of Sirius is the big dog. So it indicates that the, the Gran Canaria became his got his name from this alignment from the main star of the Sirius constellation. And this all points to 2900 BC and not to 800. And we went with that and m many more information to the local, uh, um, local archaeologists but they don't care, they w don't want to listen. It cannot be that two stupid guys from Germany and Switzerland come there, make uh, investigations and we mix up their whole set uh, history. So they, didn't want to, they don't want to listen to us. But we, we continue and we will make more proofs until they cannot go around anymore. Yeah, and now we are at uh, the point where I must show you a short trailer about our Abora mission because this is just a side 
project from the Abora mission, which um, Dr. Gerlitz does since over um, 30 years in the, in the footsteps of Thor Heyerdahl, like we talked yesterday in Abydos about the boat with the lee boards. And Dr. Gerlitz found out from um, uh, paint, cave paintings or wall paintings here in Upper Egypt that there were paddles with nobody on it. So um, they, they were not used to, to paddle. But what, what's the reason for these paddles then? And so he found out that this must have been lee boards. And with these lee boards, you can navigate these vessels which have no uh, main keel in the middle. So um, we, or he is now researching over 30 years um, to prove that this ancient people, like 10 to or, or six, 10 to 6,000 BC, has traveled over the oceans from um, from Egypt to South America and back. Because in over 3,000 mummies here in Egypt, they found cocaine and tobacco, which only exists in uh, South America. The, the 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 this kind of plant and. Um, this cannot be that uh, some seeds fell into the ocean and came here and, and started to grow here again in the old world. So they must have been traded. And the ancient um, mummies, they didn't consume cocaine or tobacco, but it was used for mummification. Um, thank you very much for your interest and I hope you liked it.